وكل رجالها في الحقل والمحجر فهل تغضب سجل أنا عربي Write down, I am an Arab. And my identity card is number 50,000. I have eight children. And the ninth is coming after a summer. Will you be angry? Write down, I am an Arab. Employed with fellow workers at Quarry. I have eight children. I get them bread, garment, and books from the rocks. I do not supplicate charity at your doors, nor do I belittle myself at the footsteps of your champer. So will you be angry? Write down, I am an Arab. I have a name without a title. Patient in a country where people are enraged. My roots were entrenched before the birth of mine and before the opening of the eras, before the pines and the olive trees and before the grass grow. My father descends from the family of the plow, not from the privileged class, and my grandfather was a farmer, neither will he bread nor teaches me the pride of the sun before teaching me how to read. And my house is like a watchman's hut made of branches and cane. Are you satisfied with my status? I have a name without a title. Write down, I am an Arab. Us on this assembly and in this gathering Muslim, Arab, Palestinian, our solidarity group, we charge the President of the United States, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of the State, and this administration of aiding and committing genocide against Palestinian people. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Here on this assembly, we should charge the American Congress, Senate, and the House members of a genocide by aiding occupation and apartheid against the Palestinian people in Palestine. That's right. Free, free Palestine. 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 Here on this assembly, we charge our local officials, governor of the state of Vermont, mayor of the city of Burlington, council members of the city of Burlington, of creating the atmosphere of anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, anti-Palestinians right. by denying us the right of assembly denying us of passing resolution declaring the right of Palestinian people for human rights, equal rights. That's right. Denying the Palestinian and American solidarity group for the First Amendment, freedom of speech, the right of boycott, divestment, sanction That's against right. the state of Israel and its apartheid. That's right. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. We wouldn't be here without the solidarity and the standing up with our sibling, our brothers and sister, black and brown people. Right. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. 
We wouldn't be here without the solidarity with our American indigenous people. That's right. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. We wouldn't be here without the support of our migrants community in Vermont. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Long live the solidarity from our Jewish siblings, from our siblings on LGBTQA community. Free, free Palestine. 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 Solidarity. Thank you, Afiq, for those powerful words and all the work you're doing for Palestinian liberation. Repeat after me the powerful words of the revolutionary Assad Shakur. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Again, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. I would like to welcome to the stage Michelle Edelman McCormick with Cooperation Vermont. Thank you everyone so much for being here today. Um, I know some of you must be wondering why this little angry person is always out yelling in, in the snow somewhere. And uh, I'm gonna bring it home just a little bit. I understand I am not here because I'm some good person. I promise you that 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 ain't it, right? This is not, you know, some some act of like virtue signaling. I am absolutely in clarity that my liberation is connected to the liberation of Palestinian people. That's right. Absolutely. And I don't want to make it sound selfish, but there is clarity in that that I will not be free. My children will not be free to live in a world where they are not threatened with constant violence until Palestinian children are living in a world where they're not under constant bombardment. I understand that the exact same forces of oppression are at work there and here. There is zero separation between that. Right, when we allow our military forces to receive IDF training, our, our police forces to receive IDF training, right, which is happening all over the country. Right. They're employing the exact same tactics of oppression there that they're applying here. And they have every intention of ramping that up. There's not a cop in this country that isn't two degrees of separation from that kind of oppressive militarized training. That's right. And for my two young black sons, to be able to live in this country without fear of violence from the state, I understand that our struggle is the same with the Palestinian families. That we have to do everything that we can as a people collectively to fight these systems of oppression. And to understand that it is absolutely, absolutely the capitalist ruling class that is behind all of this. Absolutely behind it. We have to wrench power from the capitalist ruling class back to the workers where it belongs. That none of our communities will be safe. None of our communities will have the resources that we need until we do that. And so I'm gonna leave you with this. We need to resist, build, and fight. This is a moment of resistance. We stand here in collective solidarity with the Palestinian people. We have to build. There is no project that is too small in our own communities. We have to be building the systems outside of this capitalist system to be able to provide and take care of each other. And then we have to be able to fight to protect it. So I'm going to need you all to get real, real busy because we're not all ready, right, on that build piece and stand with us.
Thank you, Michelle. One of the outrages that the U.S. government is committing right now is sending a load of 2,000 pound bombs to Israel. Bunker busting bombs designed to flatten Gaza. The Biden administration has green lit that while it cries crocodile tears about the victims it is causing. The hypocrisy, the stench of hypocrisy in Washington DC boggles the mind. So while we here struggle in Montpelier, in Burlington, in Barrie, with poverty and climate disaster, they're arming, funding, and supporting genocide with our money. That's why we chant, not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for Israel's crimes. Next up, we have Jaina Asaf from Free Her Vermont. Give it up for Jaina. Thank you. Hello, beautiful community. Um, as you all know, that Ashley just said, my name is Jaina Ossoff, and I am the lead organizer with Free Her Vermont. And for those who may not know, we are a people-powered group of prison abolitionists. And activists, woo! And activists from the prison abolition and Palestinian liberation movement have long walked hand in hand always showing up in support and standing in solidarity with each other's struggles, and today is no different. Palestine reminds us of the deep interconnectedness of all freedom and liberation movements and illustrates how none of us are free until all of us are free. <laughs> the oppression that is faced by the Palestinian people transcends countries, and we can see similar struggles manifest here in the United States. Imperialist and capitalist interests have created an intricate web of oppression and control which has seeped into every corner of this world. It is so beautiful to see such robust expressions of solidarity with international movements, but we must remember the importance of rooting our tactics in a local context so we can be aware of how failing to act against injustice at home may enable injustice across the globe. Vermont is not excused from these discussions and we, have now, we now have to point the fingers at ourselves to reflect on how we may too be inadvertently contributing to the erasure of indigenous peoples and upholding colonization. We just reckon with the fact that a hate crime occurred in Vermont and many seemed extremely shocked that something like this could even happen here, which illustrates how much work we still have to do. That's right. If we cannot see the ways in which our community contributes to the problem, then we fail to progress. Black and brown community members have been ringing the alarm that the presumed exceptionalism of Vermont is not accurate. That's right. From the vicious assault of the Melly brothers by the Burlington Police Department, to the white supremacists who brought an AR-15 to a Burlington Black Lives Matter rally, to the everyday vilification of black and brown leadership, this is not the first time we have seen extreme violence waged against historically oppressed groups in our That's state. Right. It is so crucial we work to identify the ways in which we may unintentionally aid in the oppression of BIPOC people at home and abroad. Gathering together at protests and calling for a ceasefire are just the beginning steps and we must push further with our demands and also work on a grassroots level to change the dynamics that allow for these types of violence to even be committed. To end by quoting from critical resistance statement on Palestine, our vision for a world free of cops and cages does not stop at the constructed borders of the US. PIC abolition is international, and that includes supporting the struggle for the freedom of all Palestinian political prisoners, ending apartheid Israel's prison and jails, and for the complete dismantling of its racist and militarized systems of control. That's right. Woo. Woo. Thank you all for your time, and remember freeing Palestine will free us all international solidarity forever. Thank you, Jaina. Use the anger and grief and war to warm you up and say with me, hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, racist hate crimes have got to go. Ho, ho. Racist hate crimes have got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. 
racist hate crimes have got to go. Thank you. It is my honor to welcome Kaya Morris up to the stage with a poem. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Kaya Morris, and I'm standing in solidarity with Palestinians and in the call and demand for peace. I usually would give you a speech, but um, this pain is personal and uh, it's very visceral, so I decided to place it in a poem. The working title is On Ending the Cycle of Never Ending Annihilation. They created a blueprint to annihilate the indigenous. Enslave the Africans, invent whiteness. Murderous, malevolent, manifest destiny, narcissistic nihilism, wretched Jim Crow laws carved into the backs of the still enslaved to this day, keloided flesh drawn into a map of depravity, denying their own DNA to demand difference, diminishment, discrimination, and dehumanization. An incessant fever-dreamed obsession with the accumulation of power and deep-seated hatred would one day conscript melanated people to fight in a war for freedom while being denied access to their own humanity daily. They laid down their lives for the promise of possibility that the millions of our slain ancestors did not die in vain for the promise of change. Solidarity then spat upon on the first opportunity, fueled into frantic propaganda, pernicious plans to establish a new world order that enshrines the genocide of generations. Each layer of the nation's foundation on an insidious improvement of past violations of humanity used against other peoples. The very same virulent vocabulary used to turn their neighbors into complacent, complicit murders once again now flows freely from their lips to brand our brothers and sisters as property to be liquidated. Still paid, it's three-fifths of persons, billions of our black reparations stripped and sent to fuel their slaughter abroad. This legacy of white supremacy steals from my coffers, where my black labor is undercompensated to feed white wealth. Reinvested now by these recipients to replicate and perfect apartheid atrocities, fascist dynasties, racist slaughter of the darker skinned and the destruction of democracies across the globe in full defiance of the reasons given for the demand of a new nation state. This moment was intentionally envisioned and the people have been played for fools while our governments and the rich knew all along that this would be the conclusion. Their expertise on the impacts of violent generational oppression is unmatched. And the haunting cries of thousands of children who are collateral damage for those who dance to war drums there is no moral compass that collaborates or calibrates to this blasphemous strategy that ensures no victors and only violence. My bloodline speaks for a love of people and peace, which is mightier than any final solution currently at play. Our world now forever changed. We should never seek to return to the same. We must will it, we must want it, we must craft it. We must never stop demanding peace. Our freedom has always been shared. And together with courageous hearts, we may finally find that the freedom for us is freedom for all. Free Palestine. We stand together and we say no. This racist system's got to go. We stand together and we say no. This racist system's got to go. We stand together and we say no. 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 Next up, we have Paul Fleckenstein from the Tempest Collective. Give it up for Paul. Sisters, brothers, and siblings, the world can seem upside down, and we have to insist on the context. 
As the great Jewish uh, Israeli historian Ilan Pape argues, the Zionist project of Israel for over 75 years has been, quote, taking as much of Palestine as possible with as few Palestinians in it as possible. This is how we can understand 75 years of ethnic cleansing, apartheid walls, occupation, mass killings and detentions, failed peace processes, and the destruction of Gaza. How is this done? Mainly horrific violence, hand in glove with the US. This incremental genocide can only be carried out by dehumanizing Palestinians and through racism and Islamophobia. Finally, for the colonizer, all resistance is terrorism and pretext for further oppression and violence and ethnic cleansing. This is the recipe of settler colonialism that we must completely reject whoever is peddling it, whether Israel, Joe Biden, or Vermont's congressional delegation. What is happening in Gaza is not an attack on Hamas, but an attack on all Palestinians and against the Palestinian resistance in general and a logical extension of the Zionist project. Our alternative for the liberation of Palestine must be rooted in the Palestinian struggle for liberation, in the regional struggles against the autocratic regimes in Egypt and elsewhere that back Israel and suppress their own democratic movements in the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement to win equal rights and democracy in all of Palestine, in a rejuvenated anti-imperialist left in the US that stands with struggles for self-determination and against occupations everywhere, in Palestine, in Puerto Rico, in Ukraine, and with the indigenous struggles across the Americas. and in a radical commitment to the truth of the great labor slogan, an injury to one is an injury to all. Solidarity, free, free Palestine. Thank you, Paul. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid has to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Brick by brick, wall by wall. Brick by brick, wall by wall. Brick by brick, wall by wall. Next up, we have a speaker from the UVM Students for Justice in Palestine. Today is a show of force. We're here to show our government, our politicians, our institutions, to the warmongers, to the imperialists, that we are not going away. We are here, and we are here to fight. They are expecting that they can wait us out, that we'll go away if they ignore us for long enough. That has been their strategy for the last two months and for the last 75 years. But this is a turning point. We look to the crowd today, and we see hundreds of us representing thousands more in our ranks who are doing more than showing up with signs. We are in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhoods. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. Expect us. And the more they escalate by ignoring us and repressing us, the harder we are going to fight back. And we will win. We mourn the dead and we fight like hell for the living. We share the strength of those in Palestine who, despite the greatest effort to break them for 75 years, have never lost their faith in victory. We too say, against all odds, we will win. because we are right. And we will fight for our victory and we will fight with everything we have. To the few in the crowd who have not done so already, get down to work. We have a world to win. And in the words of the legendary Fred Hampton, 
When we dare to struggle, we dare to win. And if you don't struggle, you don't deserve to win. I say dare to struggle, you say dare to win. Dare to struggle! Dare to win! 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 Dare to struggle! Free Palestine within our lifetime. Once again in Arabic, y'all. Min el Maya, lil Maya. Palestine, Arabia. Min el Maya, lil Maya. Palestine, Arabia. Thank you, Noor. Next, I'm proud to introduce a whole delegation of members of unions in the state of Vermont who are launching Labor for Palestine. Please give it up to them. We speak as rank and file union members and labor activists from Vermont who support Labor for Palestine. Our fellow union members in Palestine have called on American workers to oppose Israel's ongoing bombardment of Gaza. Israel's crimes are made possible by the United States and Vermont is no exception. From weapons manufacturing, to defense funding, to the F-35s, to broad economic investments, our workplaces are complicit in the illegal occupation of Palestine. Anyone with a conscience must oppose the assault on Gaza. As workers, we have a vested interest in standing with Palestine. The billions of dollars in military aid to Israel could be invested in education, healthcare, public transportation, and jobs. Think of the immense good that we could achieve with that money. For too long, union officials have followed Democrats in lending unconditional support to Israel. This violates every principle of union solidarity and weakens our collective power. But there is an alternative. Rank and file workers standing in solidarity with their Palestinian siblings. Here and globally, workers have blocked shipments of arms going to Israel. They have committed to the principles of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement. And they have passed resolutions calling for an end to Israel's illegal occupation and apartheid regime. As workers, we have the power to stop the endless flow of arms and money to Israel's war machine. Recently, we saw the United Auto Workers called for a ceasefire in Gaza. This is an important step forward, but we must do more. At this moment of crisis, we must do everything in our power to stop the genocide. We need to go beyond resolutions and build work actions, strikes, and walkouts at workplaces across the state and across the nation. <laughs> to quote the Palestinian trade unions, the struggle for Palestinian justice and liberation is not only a regionally and globally determined struggle, it is a lever for the liberation of all dispossessed and all exploited people of the world. So moving forward, come to the Labor for Palestine panel on Tuesday in Burlington. Come to the meeting for the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation next Sunday. Join with Vermont Labor for Palestine. But whatever you do, get organized. Solidarity. All right, next up, we have Earl Hatley, an Abenaki activist and, a, and the president of the Otakwichi Water Protectors. Give it up to Earl.
Uh, quiet, everyone. Uh, I'm Earl Hatley. I'm in, here. in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, I'm Earl Hatley. I'm an enrolled citizen of Abenaki Nation of Missisquoi. Uh, we'll even eat. I live in uh, the Queechee, West Hartford area. Uh, I'm honored to be here with you all today uh, on the bank of Winnustook. Uh, also called the Winniski River. Uh, it's the uh, uh, named after our delicious ramps, which we all like to eat. Uh, I don't know if you all know that. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. I'm originally from Oklahoma, uh, where I lived most of my life. Uh, my father was Chickamauga uh, uh, with uh, Shawnee and Cherokee heritage. Uh, his family was removed from northern Alabama in early 1800s uh, to Arkansas as one of the first removals of the U.S. government under the Indian removal policy. My mother, uh, who is a Beneke, uh, her family uh, suffered under the eugenics policy of Rhode Island in the 1930s, as did the Abenakis uh, here in Vermont. So I know about colonizers and their policies of removal and repression against minorities. My family and our peoples are examples, and I grew up with these legacies. The Palestinian people suffer from similar col colonial practices by the Israeli government with support of their allies, Britain, the EU, and the US. This began in World War I over the fight to control oil and continued with World War II. The creation of the Israeli state was, I believe, for the security of oil for Western Europe and the US to protect the Arabian Sea shipping lanes and the Suez Canal for their purposes. Today, Hamas and its allies fight with Israel and its allies for control of these areas while their people suffer. Their peoples want peace. With their governments, like their allies, want power. It's the same with Ukraine and Russia. That conflict is also about oil and natural gas pipelines to Europe. The US is now exporting natural gas and oil to Europe in order to take Russia's place in that market. Yay! All this while the planet heats up and future generations' lives are at stake around the world. War is worse for global warming than anything else human beings do. When I was barely 20 years old on my vision quest, Creator showed me a vision for this time. I saw the earth from space. She was sick. Creator said this is because human beings don't love each other. When I saw humans displaced by mother's reaction to their hate, they were walking down this road in a line with all their possessions on their backs in fear. There was a fork in the road up ahead. A few people when coming to the fork threw off their burdens and took that road. Then they became happy once again. Creator said, this is the path of love. Then I saw the earth begin from space and she was healed and all the people were sharing her abundance. Creator said, you are a warrior for mother earth. You are to teach the people to walk the path of love and the vision was ended. It's this easy. We must learn to love each other to love ourselves, to stop war, stop hate, and love our mother earth. Stop polluting her and she will heal and heal all of us. We human beings can share her abundance once again together. This is the message. Yet, I see it's harder to love than to hate. As human beings, love is hard. Hate seems to come easy. Why? Why? 
If we don't stop, there may not be future generations. I say to you today, learn to walk the path of love. It's our only hope. It's our only hope, walk the path of love. Thank you for allowing me to share this message. Believe in me. Believe in me. Oh. Thank you, Earl. In the spirit of his speech, up, up with liberation, down, down with occupation. Up, up with liberation. 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 Just a quick few announcements. First, just a reminder, we encourage everybody to wear masks. You can get them at the medics table. There are also hand warmers there. It's a cold day. Special thanks out to the People's Kitchen and the Rose Court Collective, which have hot drinks for everybody for free. We don't have corporate drinks. We've got people's drinks. So enjoy them at the People's Kitchen and the Rose Court Collective. Thanks to the medics and everybody who's working with them. This rally took a lot of money. There'll be buckets going through the crowd. We encourage everybody to donate generously. We want this a people's funded movement. We will not rely on corporate dollars to free our people in Palestine and free our people here. So please generate, uh, g uh, donate generously. Also, we're encouraging people in Burlington to sign the petition that's circulating in the crowd to put a ballot resolution in the upcoming elections this spring that will give the option of people in Burlington to vote or oppose an apartheid free city. We are confident we are going to win that vote. We want to set a precedent in Burlington that everybody else can imitate throughout the entire state passing resolutions against apartheid in their towns. And then we want to make Vermont, an anti-apartheid state. So sign that petition. And also, we are not going to be able to win if we are not organized. So you have to join organization. You have to join the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. We're going to be meeting at the Friends Meeting House on Saturday, December 9th at 4 p.m. Please come and join us. Also join Jewish Voice for Peace. Join Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. Join Students for Justice in Palestine. The only way we will win is if we organize our mass power to agitate against this government's war machine. Free, free Palestine! 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 Free, free losing my voice. Can everyone move forward a little bit so we can have all the people in the back if, make sure they're able to hear. You could just scooch up a little bit. And next I would like to welcome Heidi Wilson, a singer and activist and organizer in climate justice movements and social justice movements, um, performing a song for us. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, we're all going to be performing this song together. I'll need your help. It's a song by Eric Bogle that was inspired by South African freedom fighters and is still a song important to so many movements and this is a moment also. The words are, courage, my friends, you do not walk alone. We will walk with you and sing your spirit home. So many people trying to get home. So if you could repeat after me, that would be really helpful. Courage, courage, my friend, my friend, you do not walk alone, you do not walk alone, yeah, we sound good, and we Walk with you, walk with you, and sing your spirit home. And sing.
sing. And sing your spirit home. And this is a call and response song, except when we sing, hmm, you do not walk alone. We just get right in that together. And when we get to, we'll sing your spirit home, we just jump right in together on that too. Here we go. And singing's amazing because our bodies are all actually resonating at the same time. So let's just really do this. Mm -hmm. Courage, courage, my friend. You do not walk. You do not walk alone. That's right. And we And sing your spirit home. Palestine, Palestine, my friend. You do not walk. You do not walk alone. And we of people singing this song. I want to sing one more verse and it's for freedom. Anyone can sing the call too. Freedom, freedom, my friend, you do not walk alone. And we will, we Thank you to Heidi. All right. My name is Laura Indrick Stone. I'm here with jo Jewish Voice for Peace. Deborah Stoleroff, also with Jewish Voice for Peace, and for Vermonters with Justice in Palestine. Hi, uh, I'm Mary Cosentino, and I am here with the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation. I know words. Um, so, after we just sing, I invite you all to just move your bodies. We are standing here, we are cold though, we are moving and we are passionate and it's great, you know? Um, and with that, I invite everybody to take the biggest, deepest breath that you have taken all freaking day. <laughs> and again, take a big, deep breath. And now take a big deep breath and make a loud noise when you let it go. Oh! I do it again. Take a big deep breath. And make a big noise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And now I introduce you to stomping your feet. Move your feet, jog in place, do a little hop, do a little move, do a little dance. Incredible, and bring some movement to your legs. Bring some movement to your body. We are here, we are embodied, we have nervous systems. It's important to co-regulate, we are together on this. All right, all right, incredible. Maybe like do a turn, do a little hop, do whatever you want. This is a great time to be together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I love to see it. All right, and now that we have moved our bodies a bit, give us another big deep breath.
And another one, because breasts are great. And now I invite everybody to take a moment of silence for all the lives that we've lost. Thank you. All right, can people hear us now that folks have come closer to the front? Can I get like a yes or a no? Do we need to be louder? Yeah. Incredible, thank you. I love to hear that you can hear us. <laughs> louder. Louder, okay, I can be louder. That sounds great. All right, everybody, this is a poem from Hisham Aratani. Around 2015 at sixth grade. Hope dwells in my heart. It shines like a light in the darkness. This light cannot be smothered. It cannot be drowned out by tears and the screams of the wounded. It only grows in strength. This light can outshine hate. This light can outshine justice. It outshines segregation and apartheid. As of Greek legend, Pandora opened a box and when she did that, all the evil escaped. But luckily, Pandora closed the jar before hope could escape. And as long as hope stayed in that jar, hope would never escape. So I ask you one thing. Learn to never give up hope. Learn to let hope give power in the darkest of times and let the light shine. Hisham was shot in the back last Friday. Wow. These are, those, that was his poem that he wrote when he was in sixth grade. These are the words that he said from his hospital bed, speaking to his fellow citizens in Gaza and Palestine. It's important to recognize that this is part of a larger story. This hideous crime did not happen in a vacuum. As much as I appreciate and love every single one of you here today, I am but one casualty in this much wider conflict. Had I been shot in the West Bank, where I grew up, the medical services that saved my life here would likely have been withheld by the Israeli army. The soldier who shot me would go home and never be convicted. I understand that the pain is so much more real and immediate because many of you know me, but an attack like this horrific, be it here or in Palestine, this is why when you say your wishes and light your candles today, your mind should not just be focused on me as an individual, but rather as a proud member of people of being oppressed. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid's got to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid's got to fall. Brick by brick, wall by wall, Israeli apartheid's got to fall. Wall by wall, Israeli apartheid's got to fall. Now we're gonna hear from Sophie Castle with Jewish Voice for Peace. Hi everybody. My name is Sophie. I'm speaking to you today as part of the Vermont, New Hampshire chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. One of the many Jewish led organizations that are standing in solidarity with the Palestinian people. That's right. We join them in demanding a permanent ceasefire, an end to the Israeli occupation, and a political path forward that honors and centers the inalienable rights of our Palestinian siblings, comrades, and friends. That's right. For many Jews, our religious and cultural education prioritized and promoted the foundational tenet 
of Tikkun Olam. It translates to repair the world. A central vision within Jewish life to leave the world better than we found it. For many Jews, we are waking up to the reality that when we stand by as Israel systematizes violence against Palestinians, we have neglected the true universal meaning of Tikkun Olam. We call on our fellow Jews to reaffirm this vision of repair, to oppose the decades of a systemic erasure, apartheid, and destruction of Palestinian life and sovereignty that has been committed in the name of Israel, of Zionism, and of the Jewish people. We say to Netanyahu, we say to Biden, and to those who speak, seek to divide us in our struggle and to profit off of the misery of our Arab and Muslim siblings, we want none of it. And, and we, as Jews, will stand through our grief, through our heartbreak, we will stand in your way, we will make it impossible to continue on this path of endless destruction. We will reclaim our own humanity by standing with the shared humanity of all oppressed peoples. We understand now more than ever that safety is meaningless unless it is universal. As we speak, governments, faith groups, and universities nationally and right here in Vermont claim concern for the safety of the Jewish people while actively pursuing policies and practices that subject Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims to discrimination, violence, and dehumanization. That's right. That's right. Speak. We say Speak. no more. We say not in our name. That's right. None of us is safe until all of us are safe. That's right. We see through the double speak. We reject it, and we demand that our tax dollars not be used to fund this endless cycle. <laughs> Lastly, I know I stand here alongside so many who have been in this struggle long before this most recent aggression, who have lost friends and family to violence and to conflict, and who will continue to work towards justice even as our collective attention is pulled elsewhere. To those dedicated activists, I say, we will not abandon you. I want to leave us with a quote from the Jewish Talmud, a sacred text, a wish for all of us here. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to give up on it. That's right. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to give up on it. To everyone here, find your people, find a way to get involved that uses your unique skills. Take care of each other so that we can take care of this movement and know that if we work together, we will win. May our collective vision for a world of justice and solidarity buoy us as we stay in this work. Thank you. Say with me, never again is now. 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 Thank you. Never again is now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, next up on the stage, we have Char Denoy, the former poet laureate of Vermont. It's so heartwarming to be here to see see you all, and I I realize the the difficulty it is to keep this kind of fervor, which is so important, and to maintain it. And one of the ways that we do it is to keep our ears open and our hearts open and our eyes open, and never grow tired to the oppression that's happening far away, but that we with our ears and eyes can still see. I'm going to read a poem called The Silence, in which um, I imagined when the war first broke out, what was happening there. And it has two epigraphs, one by the wonderful Palestinian poet, Mahmoud Darwish, who died several years ago, but whose poems continue to speak to us. 
You're standing at the doorstep. Enter and drink Arabic coffee with us. You might sense you're human like us. You standing at the doorsteps of houses. Get out of our mornings. We need reassurance that we are human like you. And then a poem, a brief segment of a poem by the Israeli poet who is just as powerful and committed to peace as Darush, Yehuda Amachai. I want peace right now while I'm still alive. I don't want to walk like that pious man who wished for one leg of the golden chair of paradise. I want a four-legged chair right here, a plain wooden chair. I want the rest of my life peace now. The silence, the silence is deafening here because it amplifies the bombs exploding over there. That's right. Which no matter how hard I try not to hear, they continue to boom inside the ear, inside my ear, where the sounds of that intransigent ancient war exceed the speed of light on the wings of news. I'm whispering because I can hardly speak in the din that cripples my tongue. I'm releasing doves from inside my chest through the door I've opened for them, each one a priest delivering an elegy for a child, parent, sibling, friend who has died at the hand of the enemy, whose God is the same one God. I play a song in vain to subdue the silence. To subdue the silence. Can you hear? The scream grows louder inside the silence. Thank you. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. To Mexico, apartheid walls have got to go. Thanks, everyone. Now, please welcome the Education Justice Coalition. Hello everyone, we are members of an education justice movement that stands with the Education Justice Coalition of Vermont in our support of Palestine. Woo! We envision collective liberation for all people in a world in which indigenous, black, people of color, disability, immigrant, poor, and LGBTQIA plus people can thrive in a culture of belonging that is free of bias, discrimination, and oppression. Woo! A future where everyone is free includes a free Palestine. Our vision extends beyond the carceral state in the limits of today's repressive systems. We are here today to speak out in solidarity with Palestine and make links between the struggle and relevant po political struggle in Vermont schools. Many will call for neutrality in teaching about Palestine and Israel. As an Armenian, I am very familiar with the devastating effects of people playing both sides. My people experienced a genocide two months ago, funded by the US. And because of the world's neutrality, the perpetrators, Azerbaijan and Turkey, got away with the ethnic cleansing indigenous Armenians of Artsakh. Now we face a similar issue. By the words of Howard Zinn, you cannot stay neutral on a moving train. That's right. We know that the dominant narrative surrounding Palestine and Israel in schools is often minimized, ignored, or in defense of the imperialistic colonial state of Israel, in defense of the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Now is not a time to look away or to teach staying silent. Silence is compliance. That's right. Silence is violence. While the U.S. government actively and knowingly funds genocide, our schools remain unfunded, our teachers underpaid, and our students unfulfilled. Shame. 
This December, groups in partnership with the ADL, Anti-Defamation League, will be presenting at the Vermont Social Studies Teachers Conference. One workshop is being taught on anti-Semitism. We are here today in solidarity with Jewish folks violently targeted by anti-Semitism, both historically and presently, and we assert equally strongly that critiques of the state of Israel are not anti-Semitic. <laughs> ADL relies on the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. On that description of this, of this definition on their website, they explain that certain expressions of animus toward the Jewish state of Israel many, may at times cross the line into anti-Semitism. This definition of anti-Semitism has been used to silence critiques of Israel and court cases have been brought and won in its name. We are putting a call out to everyone to organize in their local community to ensure that teachers are not silenced and that the truth about the Nakba, the occupation, this apartheid, and the full history be taught in our schools. May we model to our students to fight for justice. Schools can either be sites of social replication and oppression or sites of social transformation. Our students deserve a complete education, deserve honest, truthful conversations, and deserve a free and war-free future. All youth deserve a future. Palestinian children deserve to grow up. As we gather, the U.S. is funding the murder of children by the hundreds. We join in the demand for an immediate ceasefire. May all children grow up to see a free Palestine. Free Palestine! 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 Now from Glover, Vermont, uh, Bread and Puppets, Peter Schumann is going to do a fiddle sermon. Civilization that routinely produces large quantities of debt as part of its merchandise. is war, who profits, who dies, does not merely address politics, but the, the politically guided population as well, and points to the grim fact that death embedded in traditional empathy 
budget called defense, meaning aggression, aggression policy, now actively engaged in running the latest horrendous genocide. In whose interest population the democratically elected, now openly fascist administration? How will we be allowed to die? Amicably or falsely as victims of empire design? constructed human safeguards, treaties, international conventions, abandoning all habits of decency and morality, treating its subjects like the shit they are in their eyes, the empire nothings and nowheres, useful only once every four years for a billionaire rigged election. And we yelling, and if our yelling doesn't reach their disinterested ears, will we invent new yells that are harder to neglect. Will the enough is enough be loud enough? Will they comprehend our, not in our name, not with our money? to be subjects to this murderous system. What could be a worse violation of our human rights than bombing hospitals and send the murderers to investigate the crime? No water, no food, electricity, medicine, the publicly declared intention to kill them all? Where are the screaming institutions of basic human rights? Where are the preventors and stoppers of this ultimate brutality? this bombing hospital civilization lost its right to exist? And we, aren't we meant for our birthright? The original glorious whole? Not the accumulated evil of the whole. Which obliges us to our habitual or extra habitual everyday happiness and obliges us and obliges us to fight the genociders. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone.
everybody. Thank you all for your presence and for being here first off. And let's get moving again, because I don't know about you, but I still have a body, and I trust you still have bodies, and they still gotta move. All right, so jump, so move, so spin, so do whatever the heck you want with your body if you wanna do that with it. All right, and repeat after me, Viva, Viva Palestina! Viva, Viva Palestina! After me, in our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions, we are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions. In our millions, in our billions. We are all Palestinians. We are all Palestinians. Earlier this week, three Palestinian students were shot by a white supremacist in the city of Burlington. Islamophobic and anti-Arab hate crimes have escalated in the United States enabled by the government's unconditional backing of the state of Israel and its genocide in Gaza. That has resulted in the death of over 15,000 innocent Palestinians. Do you trust the media that lies about our Palestinian brothers and sisters, the media that sympathizes with the shooter? Do you trust our government? Do you trust the racist, militarized police force trained by the IDF soldiers? No. 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 no! no! Real democracy and real safety would mean no excuses for hate crimes, no enabling of genocide. It was not the police or politicians who first came to those students' aid at that night. It was one of us. They rescued each other. One of us. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? As socialists, we recognize that in the words of Hisham Awatani, this is part of a larger story. And in the words of Hassan Kadafani, imperialism has laid its body over the world. Wherever you strike it, you damage it and serve the world's revolution. Palestinians and BIPOC Americans, black, indigenous, people of color, and the United States have the same enemies and our freedom is tied together. The common enemy of ours lays the foundation of our alliance with the Palestinian people. We know what it's like to face dehumanization, checkpoints, imprisonment, police repression, vigilante violence, and a global militarized system working against us for profit. However, we are all more than just an oppressed people. We are leading the resistance and building a better world. We recognize the brave Palestinian people Fathers, mothers, children, reporters, doctors, teachers, and care workers, emergency responders, artists who risk their lives for their people every single day. Because of them, people across the globe see their own humanity in the faces and stories of Palestinians. This solidarity terrifies the capitalist Zionist regime and the evil it spawns, racism and imperialism. Their propaganda is failing. Support for Palestine is growing every single day. <laughs> Protests and organizations are increasing in size, frequency and focus, not just in the United States, but across the globe. <laughs> this is why, no matter who you are, you have to contribute to the cause. Showing up to protest, posting, these are great, but to keep the movement moving, we need to organize. We learn from the 
Palestinian resistance, the importance of organization. To quote Malcolm X, we are not outnumbered, but out-organized. Building revolutionary organization is how we not just scare, but defeat the ruling class. There is only one solution. Only one solution. There is only one solution. Thank you very much. to it from here. It's like got some call and response and then everybody all in again, kind of like last time. So let's start by learning the everybody in part. It goes. We call for a ceasefire. Try that. We call for a ceasefire. Let's do it again. We call for a That's right. One more time. We call for a ceasefire. My turn. 
Raising our voices, raising our voices, higher and higher, higher and higher. No more, no more war, war. We call for a ceasefire. That's it. Raising our voices, raising our voices, higher and higher, higher and higher. No more, no more war, war. We call for a ceasefire. Raising our voices, raising our voices, higher and higher. Heidi. Next up, we have Yovani Moreno from Migrant Justice. And could we also call Rowan, Rowan up to the stage, please? Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? How you doing? Con un poquito de frío, ¿verdad? Love it cold, huh? Mucho frío, yo sí siento frío. A lot of cold, a lot of cold. Mi nombre es Yovani, vengo de México. My name is Giovanni, I'm from Mexico. Y estoy aquí en representación de la Organización de Justicia Migrante junto con mis demás compañeros que pueden ver acá detrás de mí. And I'm here representing the organization Migrant Justice alongside my compañeros that you see behind me. Es un pequeño grupo que nos acompaña el día de hoy. Este, sin embargo, muchos de ellos, este, de mis compañeros, están en las granjas trabajando o rendiendo las vacas. And we have a small group here with us today, but we have many more scattered around the state in the barns and milking parlors, milking cows. Me hubiese gustado que estuviéramos reunidos aquí por una ocasión de celebrar algo bonito. Algo que, que nos agrada, algo que nos haga sentir feliz. And I wish we could all be here gathering to celebrate something, to engage in something that brings us joy. Sin embargo, estamos acá por una triste realidad, no. Este, por nuestros hermanos de Palestina que están sufriendo. But unfortunately, what brings us here today is the sad reality of the suffering of our Palestinian siblings. Es triste no ver que nuestros hermanos de Palestina están sufriendo y, y cuál es la realidad, el por qué. ¿Se ha preguntado usted el por qué está así? And as we bear witness to the suffering of our Palestinian siblings, we must ask ourselves why. Yo lo resumiría el poder, la discriminación, el racismo. And at its root, this is a question of power of racism, of discrimination. Right. Y por eso estamos acá, estamos conscientes de eso, y estamos acá para exigir a, a los gobiernos, porque no solo lo que es Estados Unidos este, está así, sino en muchos otros países, exigimos a los gobiernos que ya pare todo esto. And that is why we are here in el pueblo de Palestina. But among all those governments, we want to single out President Biden for a particular message because we know that he is responsible for providing the means for this genocide. Nosotros los mexicanos estamos tenemos algo común con con Palestina. As Mexicans, we know that we have much in common with Palestine. Yeah. 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 Digo esto? And why do I say that? Porque hace unos años atrás, si ustedes se dieron cuenta, este, el presidente de Estados Unidos manda construir el, el muro. Because many of you will remember 
Years ago, the presidents of the United States began talking about building a wall. Prohibiendo así el paso a muchos mexicanos en el cual muchos vienen acá buscando un futuro mejor para su familia. A wall to prevent the migration of Mexicans who are coming to search for a better life for ourselves and our families. Entonces, ¿qué está pasando ahí? Entonces, el gobierno, las autoridades están este como prohibiendo así el poder dar una oportunidad a, a, a las personas a tener una vida mejor. The governments, the authorities are advancing policies to prevent our people from living a better life. Y es por eso que estoy acá como persona, como ser humano, uniéndome a, al pueblo de Palestina. Bueno, no, yo, yo no, no le puedo llamar pueblo, le puedo llamar hermano, porque eso es lo que somos de realidad. And that's why I am here as a human being to show my solidarity with the Palestinian people. And beyond calling them the people, I say my Palestinian siblings. Y exigimos de manera muy fuerte que ya pare todo esto, que pare el genocidio que se está llevando a cabo contra el pueblo de Palestina. And we demand in the strongest possible terms an immediate end to the genocide against Palestinian people. Y voy a terminar con esta frase. And now I want to end with a chant. Que viva Palestina! Viva, viva, Palestina. viva, viva Palestina! 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 When Yobani speaks, he speaks about the apartheid, not only in Israel, but right here in the United States. Because in the United States, migrant workers are denied basic rights to citizenship, to unionization, to the right to drive, to the right to be, to the right to be free. There's apartheid in Israel. There's apartheid in the United States. That's why we chant, from Palestine to Mexico, border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, border walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, from Palestine to Mexico, from Palestine to Mexico, Next up, we have Lauren B. Wade from Sunrise at Dartmouth and also an SJP activist on Dartmouth's campus. Give it up to Lauren. Hi, thank you so much for being here. This is such an honor to get to speak to you all. Um, so I'm here to share a bit of my story about getting arrested by my college campus. By speak up loud into the mic. I'm here to share a bit of my story about getting arrested by Dartmouth College for protesting for divestment from Israeli apartheid. But this isn't just my story. Across the country, we have seen our universities crack down on activism in solidarity with Palestine. We have been threatened, doxxed, faced threats of suspension, and even arrested. Claims from our universities to support free speech crumble when our demands threaten their monetary interests and their financial investments in the settler colonial regime that is Israel. As students, we must hold our universities accountable for funding and profiting off of the ongoing gen genocide in Gaza, and we cannot let their attempts at suppression stop us. Dartmouth is an institution with an $8 billion endowment, and they must divest from Israeli apartheid. That's right. And we've been fighting for this for years. 
Most recently, this past October, we held an ongoing occupation that lasted for over a week. We were there 24-7. And we were there to mourn the loss of Palestinian lives because the college refused to. The college hosted and endorsed a vigil at which our president spoke at that specifically only mourned the loss of Israeli lives. The entire week, we were peaceful. We were demonstrating, we were showing solidarity, we were building community, yet the administration and campus security threatened us, suppressed us, intimidating us intimidated us the entire time, which, which culminated in our arrest. While demonstrating, I was arrested for criminal trespassing. And to reiterate, again, we were peaceful the entire time, but the the day after we were arrested, the president of Dartmouth released a statement and sent it out to every member of our campus community claiming that we had been violent. This, this was a dangerous rewriting of history to justify their needless escalation. And these baseless accusations play into the racist rhetoric that condemns all Palestinians and those who stand in solidarity with Palestine as terrorist sympathizers. This rhetoric, this rewriting of history, has contributed to the rise of Islamic, Islamophobic hate crimes both on our campus and across this country that have devastated our communities. So we must hold Dartmouth accountable. We must hold every college accountable, every company, every government representative across this country accountable for the violence they are causing and complicit in. The suppression that we're facing, especially on college campuses, is terrifying. But we cannot let these threats and intimidation isolate us. When you take action for Palestine, you have the solidarity and support of all of us. So keep taking action. Keep organizing. Join groups. There are so many here. Please join whatever you can. And if you're in the Hanover area or in the Upper Valley, we will be hosting an action on this Monday, December 4th. We'll be meeting outside of the Bakerberry Library at 6.15 and protesting the President, President Bylock's welcome tour, where she will continue to justify her needless escalation, continue to spout this extremely um, dangerous rhetoric that claims that we are violent and endangers members of our community. And so join us at 6.15 to continue protesting for divestment from Israeli apartheid. Thank you. Thank you, Rowan, for sharing your story. Do a chance. I, I say when, Palest when Palestine is oppressed, boycott sanctions and divest. When Palestine is oppressed, when Palestine is oppressed, when Palestine is oppressed, when Palestine is oppressed, thank you. Next up, we have Sam Bliss. Introduce you guys. We're gonna play a song based on a call for peace in ancient times from a Hebrew prophet named Isaiah. And that seems, that seems relevant. What Isaiah wrote is that they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation, nor study war no more. And so y'all should, should sing with, because there's not very many words in the song, and it's mostly study war no more, ain't going to study no more, war no more, and down by the riverside.
to Sam and Evan. Thanks so much. Next up we have Alex Hilliard from the Vermont Relief Collective. Give it up to Alex. for joining us today in Montpelier to address the ongoing atrocities in Palestine. I'm so grateful for the organizers who have undoubtedly invested a significant chunk of their time and resources to be able to allow us to protest the injustices we now see. Further, I would like to express my gratitude for the previous speakers. I'm so grateful for your bravery and commitment to social justice. My name is Alex Hilliard, I use they, them pronouns, and I am a black, transgender, and queer identifying individual from Poultney. Poultney is, <laughs> Poultney is located in Rutland County. I aspire to be an elected official and to serve the Vermont legislature starting in 2024. I am here today speaking to you on behalf of the Relief Collective. The Vermont Relief Collective cultivates connection, shares resources, and amplifies the voices of people of color in Vermont within our focus areas of land, environment, agriculture, and foodways. Relief's, Net Relief's network stands in solidarity with the individuals and organizations here, which includes requ requesting a ceasefire and putting an end to the atrocities being committed against human beings with worth and value. We also desire to see an end of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. In 1947, after the Holocaust, the idea of a secure homeland for the Jewish community gained support across the world, including the United States. However, the creation of Israel from a land which was already settled has led to conflict with native Palestinians escalating over time. In fact, when we look at key dates, including the Second Intifada of 2009, and consider what was occurring at that time, it might as well be today, for the events of then and today are overwhelmingly similar. Particularly in the West Bank and Gaza City, terrorism and violence have plagued the region. Unfortunately, the terrorist regime Hamas, in power for decades, has garnered significant support amongst Palestinians, contributing to a cycle of violence. Coupled with the United States funding of Israel's war machine, the conflict seems like it may never end. Since October 7, 2023, over 15,000 Palestinians have lost their lives. Closer to home on November 25, 2023, three Palestinian college students were shot in Burlington, Vermont. Likely a hate, hate crime as they wore their kafiyas, a symbol of Palestinian identity and resistance. We gather not just to protest the attacks on Palestine, but also to condemn hatred and discrimination towards Palestinians and Muslims, evident in the recent Burlington shooting. In the face of these challenges, let us find hope and strength and unity. Today, we've stood together to voice our concerns and advocate for a better future. As we grapple with the overwhelming lack of safety, let's take tangible steps. Seek mental health support, leverage community resources, and actively engage in discussions. Let us carry the flame of hope and commitment in our hearts. Our activism matters. Our collective resilience has the power to create a more inclusive and compassionate world. In Vermont and beyond, let us continue to sow the seeds of positive change. Support local initiatives, foster connections, and amplify voices that often go unheard. Thank you for your efforts. Together, let us use our collective voices to make Palestine and Vermont more habitable and safe places. Thank you for your dedication and presence. The journey ahead may be challenging, but it is one we undertake together, hand in hand, for a brighter future, or brighter tomorrow. Free Palestine. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Um, we have one more speaker, and then we have a performance from Bread and Puppet, and then a band. So I know we're cold, but hang in there if you can. Next up, I would love to welcome Michelle Segalczyk to the stage, um, speaking with for Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. I'm Michelle. I'm here with the Champlain Valley Democratic Socialists of America. I'm also a teacher at Burlington High School. I'm moved to be here among so many people dedicated to peace um, and Palestinian freedom. I grew up on stories of my family's loss and survival in the Holocaust. 
of my grandfather, whose siblings were killed in mobile gas chambers, children targeted while parents were away at work, of my great-grandmother, who died just last year, who trekked through the forests of eastern Belarus, traveling barefoot at night for weeks, separated from her siblings who had been in daycare when the sudden call for evacuation came. She was eventually reunited with her sister over a year later. Her brother had been shot point blank along with his caretaker. I grew up learning with pride of the partisan fighters who resisted and of the ghetto uprisings where people said, as they did in Vilna, let us not go as sheep to slaughter. And I grew up taking seriously the weight of the words, never again. We have lost the thread of any moral vision and if we believe anyone should have stood up for us, we must stand up for Palestinians now. As part of our Holocaust curriculum, we are asked to teach the stages of genocide. What is that for if we can't name it as it is happening? And as a teacher, I know that young people can sense when we are hesitant and hear volumes from our fearful silence. They need us to state clearly what is happening and unequivocally stand up for Palestinian freedom. We must remind people that this isn't complicated. Let us not wait until the story is told in history books to loudly call this what it is, an unfolding genocide, and to rise up against it. I am proud that CVDSA has been steadfast in public in its condemnation of this genocide from day one. A permanent ceasefire is just a start. Palestinians have a right to exist. Palestinians have a right to live with dignity and security. Let us continue to resist this genocidal war. Palestine will be free. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michelle. Never again is now. 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 What do we want? When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! That's just the beginning. Because many politicians are starting to say, I agree with a ceasefire. But that's just the beginning. We want to stop the entire genocidal war machine of Israel. We want to end Israel's siege of Gaza, its occupation of the West Bank, its apartheid system in Israel. We want unrestricted humanitarian aid to all Palestinians. We want to free all Palestinian prisoners and hostages. We demand the full civil rights of Palestinians and Palestine solidarity activists now when they face a racist new McCarthyism. We want an end to all U.S. aid to Israel now. We want boycott, divestment, and sanctions against the state of Israel. And we support Palestinians' right to self-determination, their right to return, and equal rights. We support a free Palestine. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Next up we have a performance by Bread and Puppet Theater. Give it up for Bread and Puppet!
apply for the status of scum of the earth. Hey, bomb hospital. Thank you, Fred and Puppets! They're not done yet, sorry.
do this. We're not doing that. Yeah, yeah, we can do this right after they're done with this. So you do the thank the sponsors, and I'll do the next steps. Okay. Yeah, you do that. Thank you, Bread and Puppet. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Palestine will never die. Palestine will never die. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Palestine will never die. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Gaza, Gaza, don't you cry. Palestine will never die. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I know it's cold. I just want to give another thank you to our sponsors and endorsers. There's solidarity without it. There's no coalition building. There's no movement. Um, so a big thank you to Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine, Students for Justice in Palestine, Jewish Voices for Peace, Cooperation Vermont, Champaign Valley Democratic Socialists of America, Education Justice Coalition of Vermont, Free Her Vermont, Migrant Justice, Party for Socialism and Liberation, Sunrise Champlain Valley, Rural Vermont, Tempest Collective, Upper Valley Affinity Group, Upper Valley Democratic Socialists of America, Vermont Peace Anti-War Coalition, and Vermont Relief Collective. Bread and Puppet is going to be serving bread right here. So after these announcements, they're going to be playing their band and then and come up and enjoy some bread brought to you by Bread and Puppet Theater. One thing that is extremely important is that we organize out of this demonstration. We are encouraging everybody to get involved and join an organization. Come to the December 9th meeting of the Coalition for Palestinian Liberation at the Friends Meeting House in Burlington at 4 p.m. on December 9th. Join JVP, join BTJP, join SJP. If we're not organized, we will not be able to win. For everybody in the labor movement, if you're in a union, come to this meeting in Burlington on December 5th at 6 p.m. in Burlington's Fletcher Free Library. It's a panel on Labor for Palestine. We are going to be launching a chapter of Labor for Palestine out of that meeting. So everybody come. And if you're not in a union, join a union. Organize your workplace. Organize to strike for yourself and for Palestine. And come to the Labor for Palestine meeting. One other action that's coming up that we want to announce is, as everybody knows, General Dynamic is part of the U.S. war machine. They have a subsidiary called Bath Iron Works that is based in Bath, Maine. And there's an action coming up on December 8th at 2 p.m. in Bath, Maine to shut down the Bath Iron Works, to shut down the U.S. war machine. So before the Bread and Puppet Band plays, I want to end with the chant that has led us from the beginning. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine. Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Ceasefire! When do we want it? Now! Last thing and then the band. If you came here by yourself and you want help getting home, there's the blue tent back there. They'll help you get home safely. Don't go out of this rally on your own because we know that the right wing is trying to intimidate us and they've already shot three people in the city of Burlington. We want everybody safe in the movement. We want everybody safe in the struggle. We want everybody safe in our organizations. 
That's why we'll help you get home safely. So with that, give it up for the Bread and Puppet Band. Oh, one, one more chant, sorry, from North. One last time in the mother tongue of Palestine, everybody. Man el mayor, el mayor. Please do that and thank you for being here.